Hello, and welcome back to The Deep Dive. Now, for you, our listener who counts on us for reliable HIV information, especially about testing, with our network covering over 4,500 labs across the U.S., we've got some uh, really exciting news on the treatment front today. There's quite a bit of buzz about something called ICVX. There really is. And today, yeah, we're diving deep into ICVX. But it's super important to clarify right off the bat, this isn't a vaccine to prevent HIV. Right. It's what we call a therapeutic vaccine. It's designed for people already living with HIV, a totally different ballgame. Absolutely. Key distinction. So if you are living with HIV, this research into ICVX, well, it carries a lot of potential hope, doesn't it? People are calling it maybe a game changer. Mm -hmm, definitely. And that's what we want to unpack today. We're going to look at the science, you know, how it works, what the early trials are telling us and uh, what its future might look like in HIV treatment. OK, let's get into it then. First things first. What exactly is ICVX? So ICVX comes from a company called Immunocure. And like I said, it's a therapeutic DNA vaccine. Think of it less like a shield and more like like training your body's own army after the battle has started. OK, training the army. Yeah, it's given post-infection, the main goal, to seriously boost the immune system's ability to control the virus. So not stopping the initial infection, but strengthening the body's fight after HIV is already there. Precisely. We're aiming to enhance the body's natural defenses. The ultimate hope is maybe achieving a functional cure, you know, where the virus stays suppressed without needing daily medication, or at least making management much more effective long term. OK, a functional cure. That's a big goal. So how does it actually do that? Let's get into the mechanics. How does ICVX work? Right. So fundamentally, it's a DNA vaccine. What that means is we're using a tiny piece of genetic material, a DNA sequence that basically contains the instructions for making a specific HIV protein. OK, so DNA instructions for an HIV protein. And then what happens when that gets into the body? Well, when it's injected, your own cells take up this DNA. They read the instructions and start producing that HIV protein, which we call an antigen. An antigen. Got it. And this antigen then acts like a like a wanted poster for the immune system. It signals, hey, this is foreign. This is something we need to deal with. It teaches the immune system what HIV looks like. So it's like giving the immune system a target practice session, essentially, training it to recognize the enemy. That's a good way to put it, yeah. But there's a really crucial extra layer with ICVX. It uses something called PD-1 enhancement technology. And that's key to making the immune response much more powerful. PD-1. OK, that sounds familiar. Remind us what PD-1 does. Sure. So PD-1 is a protein that's naturally found on our immune cells, especially T cells. Its normal job is to act like a break, you know, to stop the immune system from going overboard and attacking healthy tissue. An immune system safety switch, kind of. Exactly. But HIV is clever. It can actually exploit this PD-1 pathway. It basically presses that break on the immune cells that should be attacking it. Ah, so the virus uses the body's own safety mechanism to hide. Pretty much, yeah. It tells the T cells, nothing to see here, stand down. What ICVX does with its enhanced PD-1 platform is counteract that trick. It helps specific immune cells. Dendritic cells are really important here. They're like the ones showing that wanted poster around. Okay. It helps them ignore that stop signal from PD-1 when they encounter HIV. So it effectively takes the brakes off the immune response but specifically against HIV. It lets the immune system properly see and attack the infected cells. Wow, OK, so it's not just showing the target, it's disabling the virus's camouflage, too. That makes sense. Exactly. It makes the whole process much more effective. That really clarifies it. And it definitely sounds different from our current main treatments. So let's talk about that contrast. Why is ICVX different from, say, standard antiretroviral therapy? Right, so the gold standard now is ART, antiretroviral therapy. And RT is, well, it's been revolutionary. It suppresses HIV replication incredibly well, lets people live long, healthy lives. It works. It absolutely works. But it doesn't eliminate the virus reservoirs. You need to take medication every single day, lifelong, to keep the virus suppressed. So it's management, very effective management, but not eradication. Precisely. ICVX is trying a different route. Instead of just putting the brakes on the virus with drugs, it's trying to train and empower the body's own immune system to do the controlling. The hope is this could maybe lead to long-term remission where the virus stays low without RT. Mm -hmm. That potential to reduce or even stop daily pills, that would be huge for people, wouldn't it? Just thinking about daily life, adherence, side effects. Absolutely. It's not just about fewer pills. It could mean 
you know, less burden, more freedom, potentially fewer long-term medication impacts. It's about shifting the balance, letting the immune system take charge more. Yeah, empowering the immune system. I like that framing. Now, I know it's early days, but there have been some trial results. What did those initial tests show? Any promising signals? Yes, there was a phase one trial done in Shenzhen, China, and the results were uh, quite encouraging. What they found was that participants who got what the researchers identified as the optimal dose of ICVAX, they showed a significant increase in their T-cell responses, specifically targeted against HIV. Okay, an increase in T-cells. And just remind us why T-cells are so important here. So T-cells, particularly the ones we call cytotoxic T-lymphocytes or killer T-cells, are the immune system's soldiers. Their job is to find cells infected with viruses like HIV and destroy them. Got it, the attack force. Exactly, so if ICVX is boosting the number and activity of these HIV-specific killer T cells, it means the body is potentially much better armed to find and eliminate those infected cells. So the early data suggests it is actually boosting that specific part of the immune response it's designed to target. That's what it looks like, yes. It's a strong sign that the vaccine is doing what we hoped it would, enhancing the body's own ability to fight back against HIV. It definitely offers hope for better immune control. That does sound promising. So stepping back for the big picture, based on this, is ICVX potentially the future of HIV treatment? Where could this lead? Well, we have to be cautious, of course. It's still relatively early in the development process. More research, larger trials are definitely needed. Sure, sure, standard caveats apply. Right. But if these promising early results hold up in further trials, if it proves to be safe and effective in more people, then yes, ICVX could absolutely become a really significant new tool in how we treat HIV. It feels like a potential paradigm shift moving from constant suppression to maybe immune management. That's exactly the hope. Moving away from relying solely on daily medication towards a state where a person's own enhanced immune system can effectively manage the virus long term. It could really change what living with HIV means. So what happens next? What are the immediate next steps for ICVX development? Immunocure has said they're planning to start a phase two clinical trial around mid-2025. Okay, phase two. What does that involve? Phase two trials are bigger. They usually involve more people, often at multiple clinics or hospitals. The main goals are to get more data on how well the vaccine works in a broader group, find the optimal dosing ranges, and continue to monitor safety very closely. So this next phase will give us a much clearer picture of its real world potential. Precisely, it's a crucial step. If phase two goes well, then you typically move to even larger phase three trials. So while it takes time, the fact that it's progressing to phase two shows there's real momentum and belief in its potential. It feels like we're inching closer to a future where HIV is even more manageable, doesn't it? It does. Research is constantly moving forward. Okay, so for you listening, especially if HIV impacts your life directly, this ICVX story is definitely one to keep an eye on. It represents uh, a really hopeful direction. Absolutely. And we'll certainly keep tracking its progress and other developments here on the show. And just a reminder, if you need information on HIV testing right now or want to understand current treatment options better, please do check out the link in our description. You'll find resources and access to that network of over 4,500 testing labs across the U.S. we mentioned earlier. Staying informed is always key. Knowledge is power when it comes to your health. Couldn't agree more. And hey, if you found this discussion useful, please do like, share, and subscribe. It helps others find this information and you won't miss our future updates. You know, thinking about therapeutic vaccines like ICVX, it really does force us to reconsider the long-term possibilities, doesn't it? Beyond just keeping the virus down. It really does. It prompts this thought. What does it mean for long-term health and well-being if the focus shifts, even partially, from continuous drug-based suppression to actively supporting and empowering the body's own immune system to control HIV? That's something quite profound to think about. Music